Greetings. I would like to welcome you to our daily weekday Mass, held here at the National Shrine of St. Therese on the Carmelite campus in Darien, Illinois. The Carmelites cherish praying and celebrating with you. This shrine is the blessing of a generous gift from the Margie and Robert Peterson Foundation. Good morning. Welcome to the National Shrine here of St. Therese, those who are gathered here and those who are watching uh, through the internet on this last Friday of October. So first remember, just presence ourselves with the presence deep within us and all around us. Let the, of anything it takes our mind or heart away and our feet away from where our feet are in this assembly of God's people. For the Lord has gathered us together to praise him in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and, and, the, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. And as we gather before the word of God this morning, let's reflect on, the time, reflect on the times when our priorities aren't in kind of a, in line with the gospel, with the sense of life, the times we let little things become more important more because they serve our own needs than because they serve the human community. And ask the Lord for the embrace of divine mercy. Holy God, you are ever present to us and invite us always to be more than we think we are. And yet sometimes we rather shrink ourselves and shrink our sense of responsibility to the human family that you continue to entrust and challenge us with. And we ask your forgiveness as we pray, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us unto life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, you increase our faith, hope, and charity, and make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. And we ask you this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit as our one God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I speak the truth in Christ. I do not lie. My conscience joins with the Holy Spirit in bearing me witness that I have great sorrow and constant anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, <coughs> my kindred, according to the flesh. They are children of Israel. There's the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. There's the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is over all. God bless forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Glorify the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. He has granted peace in your borders. With the best of wheat, he fills you. He sends forth his command to the earth. Swiftly runs the word. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. 
He has pro proclaimed his word to Jacob, his statutes and his ordinances to Israel. He has not done thus for any other nations. His ordinances has not made known to them. Alleluia. Praise the Lord, Jerusalem. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord. I know them, and they follow me. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. The reading is taken from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. On the Sabbath, Jesus went to dine at the home of one of the leading Pharisees. And the people there were observing him carefully. In front of him there was a man suffering from dropsy. So Jesus spoke to the scholars of the law and the Pharisees in reply, asking, Is it lawful to cure on the Sabbath or not? But they kept silent. So he took the man, and then he healed him, and then he dismissed him. And they said to him, Who among you, if your son or ox falls into a cistern, would not immediately pull him out on a Sabbath day. But they were unable to answer his questions. The Gospel of the Lord. You know, Paul in the Romans, as he continues to hammer away of the total transformation of all creation in the universe because of the death and resurrection of Jesus, that somehow it changed. There's a whole new set of values, the way God is working. But he's bemoaning of the fact, he says, you who knew, I told you what it was all about, this Christ that transforms the creation into a whole different set of values. It's not about vengeance, it's not about law. But we always want to run back to that. And he goes after the, the, them saying, why did you miss it? Don't you believe in what we are in Christ, this whole transformed universe? Why don't you believe in mercy and forgiveness and freedom and joy? Because they flipped back and said, well, we better follow the law just in case. You know, they, they all want, we all think the law is going to save us or earn God's favor. It's an interesting kind of thing. And I think most of us were brought up that way, wasn't it? When I was growing up, you know, obedience to the law of the church, that's all it was. <laughs> Whether you believed in Jesus and his transforming power seemed to be irrelevant. And that's what he's after, and I think it's something we have to look at ourselves these days. Because we get into very law-abiding and stuff, and what's the law, and what's it really all about, and and people even changing the rule. And Jesus, it's an interesting in that story, it's a Sabbath. They always have that dinner, the Sabbath dinner. And he went in there and you can see they're looking at him because there's somebody sick there. And of course, remember people were sick was a punishment from God for something they or their ancestors had done. So they were kosher, you couldn't touch them. And, uh, you know, and they're looking. And I could see he's just, he's deliberately doing it. I swear he does it on Sabbath deliberately. He does so many of his things just to poke fun at them because they're all uptight about the law and what you could and couldn't do on Sabbath. And he says, is it lawful? He even asked them, do you think it's lawful to cure on the Sabbath? And I'm sure they were like, oh, you know, they get all uptight. We get so uptight about crazy things, don't we? And so he just went over to the man, touched him, cured him. He said, go on, you're free, you belong. And I'm sure they were, oh! you know, you could see them all being horrified and scandaled. Look what he did. He did something on the Sabbath. And yet, what does he say? Look, if you're, you're one of your children or one of your animals fell into a cistern, you'd pull them out, wouldn't you? Why can't we heal somebody? See, he's challenging these kind of silly notions by which we shrink. What it's about Sabbath was to enjoy the creation to rest and enjoy everything, not uptight about oh, only 99 steps and 100 is a, law, is a mortal sin or something. Remember, we used to get in there. And we do a lot of that. There's so many people that are so rigid about things. It's really kind of sick and, and you know, somehow as if they're afraid of God or that God is mean and angry and keeping exact count. You know, that's a real sin against God. And I think we have to enjoy this thing, but most, so many of the things it's our needs are operating, our needs, our expectations are operating, not God operating, or this transformation of Christ. If we're people who truly believe that God raised Jesus to life, 
after very religious people really got him killed and raised him to life. And he said, look, none of that is important. What's important is you understand the divine presence in you, that you're the beloved sons and daughters of God. And you come from a sense of being loved, not being afraid of something. We got to do this right. My security need is in operating here. It's not about our security needs or any other needs. It's about God working in and through us. And somehow there's a freedom that comes from that. You know, truly religious people are joyful, they're at peace, they don't live in anxiety. They have disappointments and hurts like we all do. But there's a certain ease to things. But when people are so uptight about everything, what about this, what about that, what, about that? what do you think this is about? Well, God might be noticing it. Really? So I think we have to look at that. I think it's this freedom he's saying, you know. They were even stunned when he just did it, you know, very simply. He's here to free us from anything that shrinks us or doesn't make us fully alive, doesn't feel responsible to the creation or every other people who live in darkness, fear, disappointment, disillusion, who fall through the cracks of this world. Well, that's what I want you to do. That's what, well, I'm going, I go to Mass, I, I follow the laws and I fast, but, but, you know. We want to reduce it to something other than what the gospel and the kingdom of God is about. And that's hard. We all struggle with that. I want God to do what I think he should be doing. He doesn't often. But I, so I think as we gather here today to listen to the word of God that continues to challenge us and open us in our tradition, to celebrate the very presence of Jesus always and already present in us, the eat of his body and blood which empowers and makes real and transforms us, that we be a transforming agent with a certain freedom and a joy and a, a comfort level and compassion about who we are and what God is doing to us this day. Jesus promised that whenever we gather together in faith, Abba, our Father, would listen to us, and so let us pray. Let's first of all pray for peace in our world and wherever people suffer from the violence, the injustice, and historic misunderstanding of others, let us pray to the Lord. Let us gather together in our hearts and pray for those people who need the healing power of the Lord Jesus mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually, or relationally. For them, let us pray to the Lord. I'd like to pray for all the members of the Little Flower Society and for all people who support the life and the ministries of the Carmelites here and throughout the world. Let us pray to the Lord. We've been asked to remember Francisco Kiansko and Zen uh, Botal, Botal uh, yeah, who are both in, in the kingdom, and for all of our departed dead, that the Lord might continue to make them whole and to live in, it, in the, the glorious presence of heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. And let's pray for ourselves, for the things that make up us tight, that we might learn to trust God and the trust that God is working through in and through us to transform a world that will ultimately become totally God's kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. And in silence, let us pray for our own private and personal intentions. For them, let us pray to the Lord. Gracious and faithful God, thank you for always listening to us. And we ask you to continue to manifest your presence in our life by responding to the needs that we place here before you and those that lie unspoken and even unknown in the sounds of our hearts. And we ask you this through Christ our Lord. And through the mingling of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbles himself to share in our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread and wine to offer, fruit of the earth and vine and work of human hands. They will become for us our spiritual food and drink. 
And Lord God, we ask you to receive us and to be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. And my sisters and brothers, let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to the Holy One, our God. O oh Lord, look on the offerings that we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be above all directed to your glory. And we ask you this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus the Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the freedom of the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we proclaim your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the hut. You, he who comes. And you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. And make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Holy Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For we remember and give thanks that at the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, that Jesus took bread, and giving you thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. And we remember and give thanks that in that same way, that before that supper was ended, that Jesus took the chalice. And once more giving you thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sin may be forgiven. And do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, this bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. In humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by your Holy Spirit. And Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and Daniel our Bishop, and the entire people that you create, uh, you, that you that you claim is your own. <clears throat> Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, with the blessed apostles, with St. Therese and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For we join in the sacrifice of Jesus, because we know, we believe, and we proclaim that it is only through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And inspired by divine teaching, let's pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from Lord, deliver us from all evil and from all fear, from whatever prevents us from knowing you and from loving one another. We ask for your mercy. We ask for your peace, so that we can live all of our days joyfully awaiting and experiencing the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power. And Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles and to your friends, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church gathered here, and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And let us safely offer each other some sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God. This is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who has taken away the sin, darkness, and division of our world. And blessed are we who are called to this banquet of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be. body of Christ the 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 body of Christ, 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 the body of Christ body of Christ the body of Christ the body of Christ the body of Christ 
the body of Christ. The body of Christ. Leave me the top. Give me the top. I'm going to get that thing out the top. It's broken. I'm going to get that fixed. Put this on. Now let us pray. O oh Lord, may your sacraments perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs may one day pos we possess in truth, and we ask you this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and all days of your life. And let's praise Mary, our sister in faith. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. This Mass is ended. Let's go forth in peace and glorify the Lord by the way we live our lives. And be careful if any of you, are, you know, make sure you bundle up and have a raincoat if any of you are going to fly across the moon on Sunday night, you know, one of those.